everybody. Um, back with the next part, or last, it should be part of your um, managing crisis and divorce assignment. Um, so we're picking up where you're um, starting on child custody schedules. Um, because if someone has to get a divorce, you have to agree on a lot of different things. And really being specific is very important. Um, so the first part is just exchanging children. Like when, where, like specifically what times. Um, being really specific on them. So first thing is agreeing at a location. Um, this could be at um, where the person lives and whoever doesn't have them goes and picks them up. It could be um, the other way around. Whoever has them brings them to the other person. Um, it could be a neutral location. Um, now, some people meet halfway if they're going to be there, but you have to specify where that halfway is. So you could make up where each spot is to do the halfway point, but spe put a specific place um, for each pickup drop off. Um, some people have really a hard time and they meet at the police station. Um, especially if they're fearful for their safety. Unfortunately, some people have been through that too. So it just varies. Um, not really a right or wrong. You just have to decide. So it's really clear. Um, and then there's a lot of times people will do a school day time for pickup. Um, if people are able, like maybe they pick up after school. Like maybe it's at 3 o'clock or 3.30 or whatever it is. And then that's when they get them. Um, you know, I do that for my daughter. Um, it works out well. Even if your children aren't school age yet, then you don't have to redo the agreement once they hit that too. Um, Non-school day time for pickup. Um, for that, you can do a little maybe earlier in the day, or you can keep it consistent. It's really just varies, but it's um, what people want. And then how to pick up. This is like which parent travels and when. So just being really specific about, okay, if we're the pickup is at this person's house or this person's in charge of getting them. That's kind of where that piece goes, even though I talked about it sooner. Okay. And then the next one is using like the calendar below. I have a couple examples of kind of how this can look. Um, but being specific about what days each person will have the child. Calendar should be exact pickup and drop off times. Right. The times in for pickup and drop offs. Drop offs. Um, we already have the times up here, so it's actually, you don't really need to do the times. Kind of ignore the times. It's just overnight. So, like if I was on here, you could write, I like to write chance moon on here. And then maybe what I would do for this is I would, I could like pick a fill color, right? So I could do something like, oops, I just did the boxes. I meant to do the whole thing. Um, so I go back to none, I do the fill color, and I do something lightish so I can still see that, right? And then maybe on here, and this is where it's tricky because, like, what's the overnight, right? And then on here, you could put, um, maybe I'm going to put busy. All right, I could put that, and then I would do, like, a fill color until whenever that might be, right? So you have to just, like, play with it. Okay, or if you don't want to do that, you just put in, like I would just take, copy, paste, 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 and then it goes to the next person, right? So then if I put Billy in, then I'm going to do Billy, Billy, right? And then I, like this is to also just, I would put like to here, like this is the overnight, transfer to. So then this is saying, like, if I was going to count the overnights, this means I would have one, two, three, four, five overnights here. Okay. So far, Billy has three. So, and you need to make sure that within this, like, four-week window that it's a 50-50, right? So making sure that it's like that. Okay. So you decide how to fill it out, but make sure it makes sense and make sure it's really clear like the overnights because for custody the overnights are what really count um for stuff okay and then you're going to do your holiday schedule um so you're going to pick and again this needs to be even you can't just decide oh i'm going to just keep them all um all the holidays that doesn't work no one's going to agree to that or most people wouldn't if they care about their kids usually too much. Um, um, some people know it depends. Like my ex-husband is a pilot. Like he 
he has it that he should be able to get her, but if he can't get her because he's working, then he just doesn't. Um, so it really varies. Sometimes people's jobs don't really allow for it, um, or they might live far away, or there are different things for it. But most of the time, people are like, I want the holidays. Um, so, and this is mostly just kind of going in order of like the year of what happened. So we have New Year's Eve, Memorial Day, um, July 4th, Labor Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving. Um, and then I have winter holiday number one. So this, if you celebrate Christmas, this could be Christmas Eve, maybe the first part of Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Um, then we have a second one. Like some people split it up and do like, like one person has them Christmas Eve and one Christmas Day or the first part of Hanukkah, the second part of Hanukkah. You get the idea. Um, so and some people prefer to have it the same. So me, you can, that can be like one person could have both of these times and then the next year the other person has both. Um, so then we have spring holidays, we have Eid, we have Easter options, I have another spring holiday in case there's one there for anybody. Like sometimes people will do um, like, uh, what do you call it, um, spring break in the spring holiday if they want that. That's kind of optional there too. We have Mother's Day and Father's Day. And I have both of these on here just in case, but if you have a um, like same sex relationship, like like for me, I just always have her Mother's Day, right? So I have her Mother's Day no matter what, and then her dad has her Father's Day no matter what. If you have a same sex relationship though, and you're both female, you alternate those, if that makes sense. Um, and then Father's Day, you'd maybe just take out and be like, none, it doesn't matter. Um, or maybe it still does matter. Maybe it's just celebrate that still. I, it's kind of like up to you. Um, and then I have the kid, kids' birthdays. Who are you going to put that? And then also the parent birthdays. If they want their children then. If you don't have, um, like if you have one kid only, then for like kid two and three, just put, you know, no kid or something on those lines. Okay. And then just being sure, like name the parent in odd years, even years. And this is just like the end. So like 2022 is an even year. 2023 is an odd year. Um, so it's just whatever it ends with. Right. And then we have pick up and drop off date and time in case the date is for if, especially like these winter holidays is really being specific about like, are they staying for like Christmas and Christmas day? What, what does that look like? Um, some of the other ones are not so much like for, for me, we do like Christmas Eve is kind of important. My daughter, we have traditions and we just, um, that she really likes. There's nothing special, but she really likes them. And so she's with Christmas Eve for the whole evening and then goes back Christmas or sorry, not Christmas, but New Year's day. And then, so that's what would be specified in here and then specific times and Memorial day. Like for ours, we just do like 10 to like, I don't know. I can't remember. I'd have to look, but like six o'clock or eight o'clock on Memorial Day. It just varies. And hers is messed up because her birthday is really close to Memorial Day too. So you decide how that looks. It's just, and then if you're alternating, it's just, it's fairly, pretty fair as long as it's even and odd. Okay. And then the next part is the child support calculator. This is complicated and that's where I have this filled out for you. So I'm giving you information. So again, to help fill this out, it says note 50% um, is of 365 days, because 365 days in one year is 182.5. That's splitting them in the half. Okay, I'm giving you the medical amounts. I'm giving you dental amounts, and I'm giving you childcare cost per kid based on age. And as you're doing this, if however many kids you have, you just start from this bottom and go down. So if you have one kid, you're going to have a four-year-old. If you have two kids, you're going to have a four and a six-year-old. Three kids, four, six, and an eight-year-old. You get the idea, okay? So you're just going to follow this these samples below. I just typed in a bunch of this stuff, and then I have arrows. Like this says, add your spouse in your name. I just put a Jason and Jill in there, right, for fun, okay? Number three and four, completely stay blank. You just leave them that way. Number five, I have an arrow. You change this to the number of children that you have, whatever you said on your dating assignment. Okay, number six through 12, right here, number six all the way to 12, you're going to put what I have. So I have 5,000 parent A, 4,166, and then everything else is zero. Okay, numbers, oh shoot, I have 12 and 13, but it should be, 
um, 13 and 14. We are going to put the numbers in based on the person. And I have that up top. So it's up here. The medical amount is 400 and dental is 30. So you're going to type in who's in charge of the health insurance coverage for the children. So if it's, um, so it would be 400 you're going to put in for one and 30 for the other. You decide who's going to pay what. Okay. And then the next one, 15 needs to be yes for the parenting time. And then it should be child 182.5. So just leave this as is and it's going to be no. So you're going to fill it out how I have it. Okay. And then number 16 is number of joint children receiving child care. It, the 4, 6, 8, and really 10 should all be in daycare. Okay, once they hit that 12, we're pretty confident. Sometimes you can maybe get away with a 10-year-old if they don't have to, like, find a way before or after school, or it's a really small amount of time. But, so you're going to have all of those. So you have to add up the total, okay? So if I'm on here, and I have maybe a 4-year-old and a 6-year-old, this makes it at, like, a 1,000, right, if I'm doing that correctly. Here's at 900. Oh, 1,100. So and then I would be putting that in. I would put number of children, I would put two, and then the total monthly would be that 1100 I believe. Okay, and then you have to tell me which parent is going, I have listed no child care costs, but you're all gonna have it. Okay, so you're going to change this to parent A or parent B, whichever is not paying the child support. Um, or whichever, and I would do whichever one's not doing the health coverage usually works better. It evens out at least a little bit. Um, and then it says, does either parent receive child care assistance? And you'd put no. Um, and then the 20 and 21 and no. And then you're going to hit calculate. And then you can recalculate if you're like, oh my gosh, this one parent's paying way more in child support and they have the child care costs or there's some weird thing. That's okay. You can tweak it if you need to. But don't change the things that I have you changing. You'll hit calculate and then it'll give you like um, information about what it's going to be. Okay, and then you're going to plop it all in here. So parent E, I already put this income portion in here so you don't have to fill that out. But parent paying for medical and the amount. So if it's parent A, you're going to put that in here. So like I have, you're going to put it in here, but I need the information too. So that's where you're giving it to me. So is it 400, which one? Daycare amount and how much is it for B or other way around? And then this is amount to be paid to the other parent. This is the thing that's from your child support calcula um, amount calculator. Okay, continuing on, I want to show you. So I went through, clicked on this calculator, and I filled out this. It'll hit, when you hit calculate, let me bring, slide this over. And I put in, I put different amounts in, um, cause I wanted you to have, um, have to like plop stuff in differently. So notice how my amounts are different. So don't go off of my amounts and don't use this cause it'll be wrong and I'll count it wrong. And it gives this big long thing that looks really confusing. Don't worry about that. Click on this little summary piece here. And that's where it gives you the information that you need. Um, and then see how it says in the bold, it says child support obligation total amount. This is where it's saying, okay, parent A is going to have to pay $602 and parent B, $277. In reality, you don't both pay. Okay, so this is where you do the math. I get out my little calculator. And then I would do 206 minus 277. And that equals the $325. So then on my assignment, that's what I would be putting. My parent, it's parent A, right? Um, so parent A would have 325, parent B would have zero. And a lot of times people are like, what? How does that work? Because um, if parent, because I had it on mine opposite, my parent B was earning more, right? And so they're like, why are they paying zero and they're paying that? The reason is parent B is paying an astronomical amount in child support. And so parent A is having to pay that parent to co like compensate for part of the child care, like their portion of the child care, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's why. So do the math with it. Um, 
once, one of the interesting things is if I went back and redid this, like once they're not doing childcare, this would look very different. Then parent B would be, um, parent B would then be doing it instead. So parent B would then start paying parent A because they make more and the kids aren't in daycare, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's how you do that piece. Um, the next piece after you figured all that out is to make a new budget. Um, and I think I'm going to do a separate, I think I'm going to do a separate one for this as well. So I will go over the budgeting in the last part in a different video. Please let me know if you have any questions about this. I know it can get confusing, but it's calculating all these pieces out will help make a budget later. Um, let me know if you have any other questions and um, shoot me an email and have a great day. Bye y'all.